My original vision for Star Wars was to have a lot of epic scale to it and at the same time had spaceships and had creatures and had all kinds of fantastic uh, things going on in it. But the ability to create those things, to put it on film, was extremely limited. And it was very difficult to make anything with any number of creatures or alien environments. We still use a lot of the methods that we used in the very first film. I mean, there are lots of ways of doing things, but we're always constantly taking advantage of the new technologies that grows, pushing it forward to try to solve certain creative problems that I have. There was a number of us who had been wanting to do a computer-generated Yoda. Uh, and after Phantom Menace finished, we started talking about it again. And coming up with the idea of, well, maybe we should do it between the shows. Building the new computer-generated Yoda as a proof of concept for George. All right. <clears throat> so, where are you at? First question, we were talking about the eyelids and how that they don't look, they don't kind of match the, uh, if we're going with the Empire as reference. We are going with Empire. You look at it, him right here, it looks like there's this kind of weird skewing going on in his face. And I'm thinking that could be the way Frank is holding... Holding the puppet. Holding the puppet. And so what's happening is that's pulling down at the center. So I've been kind of working on that, and I've got the, kind of a, a skew shape for that. Let's see what that is here. Can mm -hmm. I just help mm -hmm. give him a little bit more of that? For me, the mouth also, the way that the lips push together, mm -hmm. it's yeah. almost like it pushes together and in a little bit. Right. That's where, I guess, if his, if his fingers his are pulling fingers back is, slightly. Yeah, it must have been. Some of that I've been working on for the mouth. I'm calling them pursed. That's perfect. Yeah. I'll get the animators to do those four shots we were talking about, and I'll take them up to George in a week or so. OK. And uh, hopefully he goes for it, and we can convince him that hopefully. we can do it all CG. Rob has a test to show you. Yoda. Right. Right. Working on a CG Yoda. These are animated renders, so they don't have any of the texture or paint uh, or TD work put onto them, but it shows some performance. I just want to get your input on what you thought. It's energy. It's around us. It binds us. Luminous beams shall be not this crude matter. Very good. And where you should not. For my ally is the Force. And the powerful is. We're still sort of figuring out how much lip sync we really want. How much articulation of the lips. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Though. It shouldn't be too much because you don't want it to sort of really contrast with the puppet too much. That's right. Makes it grow. Very good. Fantastic. Thanks. No. Fine. We've been trying to also get some of the ear wiggle that's oh, in the not. puppet and, right. and put it into the animation here. You also have to be careful about how stiff he is. Yes. You know, he's stiff because he's a puppet. So I think it can loosen up the stiffness a little bit. And otherwise, it's great. I think what we may try to do, this is a courtesy as much as anything else, is see if we can get Frank up to look at it. I would love that. I would love that. <coughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hopefully he will pick a Dexter Jester. Oh, so the Dexter Jester is uh, on the table here somewhere. <laughs> That's the plan. Cool. They did them in one week. Those are great. Morning. Oh my God. Is he beaver? <laughs> and so hopefully uh, Dexter Jester is in here somewhere. Yeah, and he's the key, isn't he? Hmm. Between these two. And the winner is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a thought? 
Since you have to animate this. <laughs> What's his personality? Um, we haven't quite. It's actually Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, if I throw my two cents in here, I, I would uh, vote for going as non-human as possible and make well, it that's, a, that's a challenge. Well, that's know? what I'm trying to do. But they're all in. When the end, when you get into them, I mean, it's got a personality and you got a yeah. character. Well, so I think this guy's got a lot of uh, a lot of yeah. possibilities with the mm -hmm. color. Well, <clears throat> what would happen? If you took this guy's helmet mm -hmm. and put it on this guy, we put a different top head on him. Mm -hmm. It would give him more of a personality. Okay, so that's a start. Well, let's keep these guys in the back room. Never know when you need a good aim. <laughs> Okay, uh, the hair is still a work in progress. It's a uh -huh. little thin and transparent, and I think... Uh, that was a little bit too much of it, too. Yeah, I think a little it's bit too much on top, and, and it's, it's all a little straight. That's a little too. brown. He's mm. got sort of wider hair, I think. Yeah, it's a little hard to control, so we're still uh, arriving. After you hit 300, way. boy, the hair <laughs> turns gray. Yeah, some of the reference we've got includes uh, um, some that's on the front side yeah. of the ear, more like sideburns. We have a reference to match, too. Eventually, it will come out that this is a digital one. Well, I'd like to make everybody think that we did it with a puppet. Uh -huh. <laughs> Surprise them when they get down to the sword fight. <laughs> <laughs> it occurred to me that it may be wise for us to build Doku as a mm -hmm. computer character, too, because the amount of fighting he does and all the things that are going on is probably going to be the easiest way for us. <laughs> Shooting these kinds of fights live action mm -hmm. is. It hasn't worked out very well. I don't think. You know, the wire work, once you start getting into wire work and you mm -hmm. get into doing these little bits and pieces, you're really mm -hmm. stuck. Whereas if we have digital characters, you know, I can just yeah. stand there and shoot it. The fun part about it is if you've got the retired Jedi and you've got this incredibly old frog, mm -hmm. who's also, we've seen him, but we've never actually seen him fight. This will be the first time you actually see him pull out that little laser sword of his and go to town. Yeah. So and that's something that everybody's waiting for. So we have to make it look not funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're starting the water creature, the Camino people. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. and so we have three subtle variations, and they could all work in the same family. Or mm -hmm. ideally, if you could kind of one direction to go, that would be the generic, and then we can make variations off of that. I sort of like this one. This one here? Okay. Yeah. Which skin are you using? His name's Joseph Goldstone, and he works here. And he kindly agreed to um, be a our alien skin person. We have some questions about a couple of things about Yoda. One is, we're trying to get a little translucency into those ears, and we're wondering what kind of blood he would have. You know, is he going to have pink? Would it be like pinkish showing through there, or would it be a pale green? Honestly, yeah, I don't know. But I could say green, okay. probably, knowing him as I do. The secret is to make him look like a rubber puppet. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the problem we got to last time is that when they they made the upgrade, it didn't look like the rubber puppet anymore. No. You know, they, so then everybody complained that he didn't look real. Mm -hmm. But they were saying, well, he looks better than he did before. Yeah, they made him better, but people don't like that. They want it to look like he did before in the first film. Right. So I would go for these. Just match those. And match these. And then, yeah, if we get this down perfect, then what we have to do is go back to the last film, you know, go back to Phantom Menace, and maybe adjust it ever so slightly so that it's, you know, we conform slightly to Phantom Menace. Okay. If we establish him as sort of looking different every 10 years or so, just, I mean, Anakin looks considerably different. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. <laughs> okay. Because of my father, I guess. Uh, 
<laughs> you can see how specifically what I call the dirt of how he moves, he moves around. He's really study it. What Frank is doing, and you extrapolate where his wrist is inside that head, you can almost feel the, the hand kind of moving like that. There's a, there's, a, there's a tension in there that he's obviously doing, but there's also sort of a, a, um, a messiness to how he moves. We want, to, we want to put that into our character. The junior animators are going to have a tendency to move around a little too smooth. We really want to keep an eye on that. This also brings up another thing. Check out the lip sync. Okay, so we need to keep an eye on that too. People have this wonderful memory of what they thought they saw in this movie, but now when we fast forward 20 years ahead, if we make them too much like the puppet, I don't think people will go for it. The audiences won't believe in it. So we're going to be dancing this line of how much articulation do we put in the face? How much articulation do we specifically put into the mouth? And then for the lip sync, what can we form and what can't we form? We have to find the balance of what Frank was able to achieve with the puppet and then what we can do with CG. But we also have to remember who he is inside him. I really want to have a sense of this character thinking. I want you guys to be thinking about what's going on. What's the subtext of the scene? What's actually going on in his head? We want to think about who he is and why he's in that scene and why is he specifically in that shot. You are reckless. Okay, let's have the show up and we'll do a take. Oh. Take safe, please. Okay. 377 Jackson, take one. Be right. Camera set. Open the door, Angie. Bobba, is your father here? Yep. May we see him? Sure. It's really hard to get into. Yeah. It's very tight. We're set. Boba, is your father here? Yep. May we see him? Sure. Dad, Tom Reese here. Okay, now we've cut. <laughs> A thing on National Geographic. They had some very, very strange and interesting eyes. Okay. So it might even be worth it to get somebody to National Geographic on those things and see if you can go through okay. uh, everything you can get on close-ups of eyes. Okay. That's for research. Yeah. Because I think for him, we may want to play with his eyes. Okay. Yeah. You can see that? There he is. It's extra gesture. Wow. And that is shown it to Susie. And he's nice. Approximately what your husband looks like without his, without his four arms. Hello, handsome. There you are. <laughs> That's you. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So you, you can have a sort of a salt and pepper mustache, and the shell is going to be a little more green. And, and does this bubble when you talk? Yes. So you're not going to have that bubble. Wow. That's fantastic. Victor 35, take three, B Mark. Mark. Yeah. Set. And action! Hey, old party! Oh, oh, oh! 
Patrol, what can I do for you? Okay, cut. And then we'll try to... Okay, we'll do a reference take. Leaving them out the door. Hey, old buddy. <laughs> So, my friend, what can I do for you? Where do you think he wants to step, step off from? from? Yeah, look at the day. Yeah, so he ran across the, the yeah. camera back here. Out, yeah. So we'll put our, is it our apple box around yep. here somewhere. It's kind uh -huh. of high. And he'll step off there. Whack. Okay. Because I think what we want to get is a camera that would pick him up, you're running in the frame, pan with him, and go go out. Could he run from that back? Oh, yeah. I mean, clear uh, everything. Uh, he can come like, straight through there. Oh, yeah. I mean, he can, from over there would be fantastic. Well, yeah. 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 Now, you're taking the shutters out. Just the middle Just the one. middle section. Yeah. Yeah. Middle section of shutters. Yeah. 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 Rob's okay. When we do the exterior, Rob's going to. All right. In this sequence, there will be some special effects to do stunts, which would be dangerous to do. In the next shot, Obi-Wan is going to be animated completely. And that involves integrating what I'm shooting with shots of a digital Obi-Wan. Can you get it there, Mark? If you want it there. Chelsea. I knew it was there. Okay, do a lens change on the techno cray. Well, they changed Yoda on you. So now. You're up against the left board, yeah. Right. I make absolutely no comments at all about that. <laughs> <laughs> and you will have a look at that. I didn't think you'd do that to me, George. No. I really didn't. You can deal with the back of his head, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I've probably done more sword fights on celluloid than any actor in history, I should think, and I've got the scars to prove it. And this fight is greater than anything I've ever been involved in. You notice the phrase I use, I've ever been involved in, because I don't do all that much of it. I physically can't. My hands and my arms will move very fast, my legs won't, not anymore. Most of it is done by my stunt double, who is absolutely superb. All right, you'll be here. We'll keep you over there. But I understand that when you see his face, mine is superimposed by a computer. So it will look as if I, the actor Christopher Lee, is involved in one of the greatest fights ever seen on the screen. A long time ago, 40 years ago, we relied so much on performance. Performance, 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 from everyone. Now, in this kind of movie, in some respects, it's more difficult because you don't know what is in front of you in the scene. But again, it comes down to performance, performance, performance. You have to have a very vivid imagination if you have that as an actor anyway, it's, it's a help. You've got to make the audience believe what you're saying is true and what you're doing could happen. It's a terrific challenge, it's an even bigger challenge when, in a sense, they know it can't. And action. But during that hour and a half or two hours, maybe it can. Right. Cut. Cut. Okay, we'll do a reference take. Our double was doing all the sword fighting, just against nothing for uh, for where he's fighting Yoda. That'll be challenging. I mean, it, there's, <laughs> and it has to be handled well because it ha does have the potential of of being unintentionally funny if it's not done right. We have this uh, this tiny little. A you know, two and a half foot tall uh, frog creature who's uh, you know, running around with these lightsabers fighting somebody who's over six feet tall. Um, if not handled just right, it's going to look silly. Okay, the tape, wind up.
Well, here we are. It's the last day of shooting on episode two. It's been uh, a fun time. Good crew. I've got uh, a lot of work ahead of me now. Uh, next Monday is when uh, <laughs> it really starts for me. This sequence, we're doing a lot of shots with Obi-Wan as a uh, full CG figure. So we're going to have to do the next generation of clothing and the next generation of hair, uh, both in terms of uh, how they move and what they look like. It's, you know, what we had before was fine for the shots we used it in, but it uh, wouldn't hold up for what we need to do with it this time. So I'm going to see just what kind of shots can we do with these figures and how hard can we push it. Uh, we're starting to rough in Yoda and the kids. Right. I mean, here he looks like he's walking a little fast. Yeah. It's better if he's a cranky old man. Cranky and getting old dad. Frank I mean, said, I should also be thinking about how sore he is. He said when he was puppeteering it, he always was concerned about Yoda's back and his neck hurting and his feet hurting and all that. And he's this old 800-year-old guy. And he said right. that I was making him look like he was only 400. And so. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. That's like a day over 403. 403. Uh, so I showed your um, Yoda in progress, JGT 220. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you, you showed that? Yeah, I did. Because okay. I wanted to have the discussion with him about Yoda's speed and how far he was walking and where he was getting. Okay. Um, he felt that the speed was okay, but he does want us to finish his walk and then sort of do that. You know, it's been a bit of a a bit of an effort to get across the floor. Okay. Just try and get a little, probably in this walk, since we're now going to see him walking towards us, uh -huh. a little less bounce in him. Okay. And then when he gets there, let's have a little bit of a recovery, which we, ha which we hadn't done before, um, okay. simply because there was no breathing. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But he can look here, and then look there, and then look there if you wanted. But mm -hmm. we should, when we move the eyes, we should move them, and then lock yep. in on a kid, <clears throat> okay. and then lock in a kid. Okay. All the kids are off screen. Okay. Um, but he felt that where you going with the shot was right. He just felt some of the actions that you were doing with the head in terms of turning were a little too young. Okay. Um, we should probably try to slow them down a bit. And I would put a little bit of... Um, uh, bobble yeah. in them mm -hmm. as he moves across. <laughs> okay. You keep him the same speed and we'll walk him through. Okay. Alrighty? The rest of it's working fine. It likes everything else. But we just want to make sure we get that dealt. Alright. Alright? Thanks, buddy. A lot of the last movie was a single character, Jar Jar, following the Jedi. In terms of 2001, those are pretty easy shots. They weren't at the time, but. Uh, this time, whenever we go to see digital creatures, they tend to be a lot of them. So we're moving up towards something like 50 or 60 animators by October. And we'll run with that big crew from October to February. And then we'll do the rapid descent, which we did last time as well. Hey! <laughs> uh, how was she? 350. You got a final on the performance and the sim and everything. KMJ 350. Ah, Done. Like that. See, I've come bringing happy news. Cool. And then um, there's another um, Tom Me shot I want to give you. That the big walk. the big walk in. Okay. Uh, this one right yeah. We will use the same walk that you had. She starts from a stationary position. Okay. She follows Obi Wan. You may have to adjust the speed in that section. Right. Alrighty. Okay. Cool. I showed the JTT 120 shot to George this morning mm -hmm. for blocking. He right. felt that the um, trajectory where he's walking is fine. Okay. Overall, his comment in terms of all the Yoda walking shots was he felt that we need to make him look older, uh, that he needs to have a little bit more labored in his walk. Sure. You know, when he gets going, might be a little slower as he gets going, okay. and then probably less bounce in his step. Okay. okay. And is that for 100 too? Yeah. Anytime he's moving. Um, basically, what Frank Oz told me was anytime he moved the puppet anywhere, when he, when he got to the end of it, or end of its movement, he would put a little breathing in, like it'd been a bit of an effort for him to get there. This is a marathon. It, you really have to think of it that way, and I have to coach the crew on that because a lot of them come on and they're used to working on commercials and they got six or eight weeks and they're like, they're, they pound on it and they're done. Well, that's not this show. You're on it for 12 months and you've got hundreds of shots, not 50 shots. Right now we're scanning maquettes. We're recording the surface of sculpture and creating a, a, a map that we can output into a, a 3D program in the computer. And this is where he's at. Now, were you able to work with the posture at all? Like from oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, now what I've done is uh, 
I've taken the uh, the pick and lined it up with this and uh, put the head where it should be at. And like I was saying before, uh, there's a bit of a difference between what you're getting here and what you're getting here. Right. Because he is leaning over. Right. But you put yours back up. I put mine back up like that. So he's going to look a little bit taller when you compare the two. Okay. Those lower arms can also counterweight. Yeah, the belly too. See how in the pose he's got the back, the arm back. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you haven't got arm in place yet for the lower ones. No, not for the lower ones. Not until I get this one. Mm -hmm. How I the want it to like look. It? Sure. Because uh, there's no sense in in sculpting two arms. No, I'm still trying to figure out how we're gonna, what we're gonna do with those second set of arms. Um, in terms of you know how he's gonna walk with them. Is, Is he it? talking out of the, the right side the whole he's time? He's gonna talk out of his, the middle of his mouth. Middle I of his mouth. Okay. Uh, watching the guy on set, he talked out of, I mean, he sort of went all over the place, which is great. So it won't be like Wado where we're talking out of one side. As animators, we handle Yoda's face and the, the mouth and the expressions and, and all that stuff. Then it'll go to the cloth people. And there's the textures that are put on and the lighting and the hair and all that, that that'll flesh it out and make him look a lot more real. I always perform my stuff first. I just act it out and film myself and see what I do, see where my eyes go. It's really subtle, the differences between what's overacted and what's not enough to get the point across. Master Jedi, so good to see you. The Prime Minister expects you. I'm expected? Of course. He is anxious to meet you. We were beginning to... See, as it goes here, he starts to looking left to right. Yeah, that's, I think it's because we're not seeing the pupils, but we can certainly spin it around but, some more. Yeah, I would you know, make it stronger. Stronger. It's, it's always difficult if he's, his head is one way and his eyes are another yeah. way, especially in something like this where we don't quite know whether the eyes are going to work at all. But now he's looking way off here. Yeah. And he should always keep yeah, looking the to the... Here, but yeah, yeah I, keep I him always looking off to the left. Okay. Not to the right. Okay. I've been working on Obi-Wan's hair, spline, mm -hmm. stuff. And this is what we haven't seen rendered since Howard was away on right. Friday, but what I've been doing is adding more hairs guide in hairs here, and guide hairs, and trying to break this up and get some of these curls. So it's just curving under yeah. in one big flow. All right. I'm in the process of just putting them all together. I'm rendering out everything, so okay. I'm double checking all the little pieces on, yeah. his, on his garment. And then, um, has it got more wrinkles on his pants? I think so the simulation is going to do all of it now, so it may be a little hard to prove it until he's walking around. Right. Okay. I think so that's it's probably the only. It's just sort of a placeholder, so. That looks quite reasonable in this form, though. So here's the robe again. Okay. Still got some collision things we're going to work out. Oh, it's going to be great, though. And then as soon as we get the tunic, I'll start playing with some tunic ideas. Yeah. Get so how to get the hood to stay on the top of his head. Well, we can do that. At the moment, the, this was the Kinney one, and it, it just slid off. But if we angle the initial position, it'll, it'll uh, fall on his head, and then we'll just keep the, the friction high, and it'll stay on his head. So. Mm -hmm. I'm still a work in progress, but I want to make sure we're heading in the right direction. We talked about uh -huh. the Jojimbo. Right. I think it's good. OK. I think what we need to do on this, when we get down to it, I think it sort of demands in a way that we are tighter on him. Right. And that maybe we pull back and maybe even come around. Is it possible to come around? Well, we can probably use another plate. He's wearing his robe in this. That's right, yes. So at the beginning, do we want the robe to be out revealing the saber so we can see it at the start? Or, or can it come from inside the robe? Out. Well, the other thing he could do is he could pull with his hand. He could sort of, you know, it open like pull it open, you know, like, like the gun Yeah, fighter. like, uh, you know, yeah, like Clint okay. would do. Okay. Um, in terms of facial expression, where we're going with that? Looks like a little... It's like concern, demon. some effort. A little demon. Yeah, it's fine. So it becomes a little bit more of the evil... Yeah, uh, oh, he's, we, you know, he's got to turn from this funny old man to a the tough... Sir Giuliani <laughs> killer. Aww. Sir Giuliani could do it with Henry Fonda, we can do it with Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. It's 55. So show me where you are with this wobble. I've got the shapes made now. Okay. So we have a shape to deflate the airbag. Fantastic. And then 
Also we have, just so it doesn't look too linear, we've got something that we can control oh, in one each side or the other. One side or the other to make it a bit more uneven as it deflates. Great. So there's different shapes for yeah, the yeah, inflated yeah. and deflated wobbles and stuff. Oh that's gonna work brilliantly. Some funny little on the side and give it away. Yeah, let, let the hands be <coughs> Oh yeah, have a little It'd be very Yeah, that's where that's where you really see it. Yeah. I guess it's hidden back there on this one, so it's... We can accentuate it here, from different it's, it's angles. It's this arm yeah, here. This, this, this has got a very nice... Yeah. It's got a kind of figure eight. Yeah. 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 So very good. Okay. Great. This was intended to be sort of a test shot to, to, uh, to kind of work out a lot of the issues with uh, <laughs> right. doing digital doubles. It's got our digital Obi-Wan in there, although this didn't really show his face. But it represented one of the more... Uh, Demanding in terms of uh, being close, close right. to camera and big in frame. Well, that's pretty good. It's a good start. Django looks good. I don't know whether he's real, but <laughs> well, he's the CG Django. Yeah. I think where this has been leading is that we're getting more confident that we'll be able to handle all the digital double shots. Okay. There's plenty of shots that you just don't want to even attempt with computer graphics. So if we can shoot that with the, the actor, we should shoot it with the actor. And then there's others that uh, are quite obviously in the other category that uh, you could never do that with the actor. And then there's these more in the in the gray. And that's that's specifically why we chose that shot to work on was because that was in the gray area. Well, you could shoot it; it'd be a pain, but uh, but you could shoot it. But if we can do it with the digital double and it'll work out all right, then that's the preferred way. Okay. Now, what we've been doing is we started, <laughs> look at this, you got this? We started to work on uh, Yoda fighting. Just trying to figure out what he's going to look like when he's moving around. And so we have our first version of this. These are all, of course, work in progress. Boom. Okay, here we go. Yep. But this is just looking yep. at how does he move. I would say he would move faster. Okay. I mean, it's going to be pretty important that he really move fast enough to where we can barely see him because then it'll all be credible. Once okay. you start to actually okay. s see what he's doing, it's going to start getting a little funky, I think, in terms of... Okay. And um, the way he's moving now in terms of animation is his feet. Mm -hmm. I would think of him more like a frog. If anything, I, he would spring around to his where he's going. Okay. His big thighs. Okay. We'll try some of Huge that. Huge thighs. We got our Kermit neck. thighs. <laughs> Ker See, it's Ker what we've done is we're going to blend <laughs> Kermit the Frog with Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the illegitimate child of Kermit the Frog and oh, Miss Piggy. Oh, man. <laughs> we've never discussed this before. <laughs> and don't let it get out because <laughs> if that hits the National Enquirer, we're all <laughs> dead. It's a very disturbed picture in my head right now. <laughs> Grave danger. You are grave danger. You are. It's almost like he's he's come to life, like he's become real. It came from hand-drawn animation, and with the computer, I mean, you can put these characters in a shot with a live-action character and have them interact, and get all the subtleties as well, like in their facial expressions. It's really good. We're studying reference and we're watching our actions in the mirror and I mean we're putting that in frame by frame. I can look at certain shots and I can tell who's done which shots. I can see the characteristics in there. I'm sure I put myself in my shots. I can't tell but I'm sure other people can probably tell. This was working on what we talked about before where he exits out of the bottom frame and he enters in the top of frame. So mm -hmm. comes in like that. Looks good. And now he yep. swings forward on one hand. Yep. And we'll send that on the clothing team as well. Digital stunt people. Mm -hmm. Much safer. Much safer. We've only only one of our digital stunt people has been injured so far. <laughs> Hello, Frank. Can you hear me? Rob is here. He's hey, hiding. Rob. Rob should be sitting right behind me. There, there's Rob. Can Hi, you Frank. see him? Hi, Rob. How you doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's the uh, animation going, guys? I think it's going well. You know, I must say these guys have done a great job. I think you'll be proud.
Right. Yeah, they, they're upholding your tradition and and um, you know it's yeah, they it's, don't whine like I do when I'm on the set, do they? Uh, uh, yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they do. They they, they they follow you. They follow your every footstep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a chorus. So we're uh, we're not really worried about sync. Okay. But we'll do it to the picture so we get a sense of timing and whatnot. Okay. And here we go. Exceptional skills, has he? Sorry, that was bad. I popped. Okay. We'll, we'll still call it take one, and we'll do take two. Exceptional. Okay. Exceptional skills he has. He has. Exceptional skills he has. Yep, that was good. Exceptional skills he has. Great, that's good. It's so nice to see him physically freed up like this. Yeah, you wait, you know. He can become so much more of a character. Yeah, wait till we get down to the, to the end. Much to learn, you still have. Okay, a little stronger. Much to learn, you still have. That's better, that's good, I like that one. The shroud of the dark side has fallen, begun. The clone war has. That was great. So that's it. That's it. So they were going to. Yeah, they were yeah, trying they to see what they found. They were trying to see if they could find a little piece that has uh, the animation of you being Rambo. Right. You will like it. It's something we've never seen in Yoda before. <laughs> but it, it really is, uh, yeah, you can have those. Well, it's great how it can have different levels of the character. That's great. So, well, here's this little piece. This, again, it's not the finished. It's just the very first rough yeah. thing. But you do get a sense of what he looks like, and he's, I think he's going to work out great. What do you think? Pretty cool. The new Yoda. Pretty cool. <laughs> this is us working on... Digital uh, Doku. It's still very much a work in progress. It's still very rough, but we want to show you an idea that we're having. Um, so he's flying in the air. We're going to have him digitally land on two feet. Okay. And he's going to come up. Yeah. We're going to match into the oh, yeah. into the live action, keeping the digital head. Okay. And let me show you its speed. It's it's still very rough, but I want to make sure you're okay with the idea. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fairly challenging to get that to work, but we'll. Um, I want to make sure we're going down the right road here. Oh, yeah, this was a big deal shot. This oh, is the uh, render with Dexter without the clothing simulation done yet, right. and uh, the rough animation model stand in for Obi Wan to figure oh, out the hand placement. Marty. Okay. Well, I've been speaking to John Knoll, and what we're going to do Marty. is we're going to use. Uh, Ewan's head, and we're going to replace oh, everything else with a CG Marty. version of Obi Wan. So the arms and the hands, you're going to end up animating oh, them, so you know exactly Marty. where they are. So you're going to have to watch out for examples like where Dexter's hand and and uh, Ewan's elbow go through each other, because we're going to have a collision object for that hand. So you'll probably in that case have to lower Dexter's hand, because once they turn that into collision, the clothing will be will be rippled like that, you know, it won't be able to pass through. Sure. Okay. George, this is Warren. Hi. Hi. He's How working are you? on um, Hi, one of our um, clothing leads, and he did this movie for me to show you what the, this is still a work in progress. Uh, he's been doing all the great work on Yoda's clothing in the whole movie with James Tooley. But, um, so this is still working on it, but this is taking Tim's latest action and then putting clothing on it. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid it was going to yeah. fly off of him, but it actually... Well, all right, the thing is, stop. Okay, go to the last frame, because okay. there's a real telltale moment there. Okay, here we come. There. Um, is there a way, and it, it happens throughout, for this to billow ever so slightly and not sort of wrap around them in an ugly way the way it does? Sure. I mean, I mean if you go back, I mean, there's, see, if. What we've it's, been. It's, here, it's. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. All I'm saying is, there, there, this yeah. place like this, where it would catch the wind, sort of. Okay. It's much more kind of sure. the romantic version rather than the reality the reality version. version. I mean, we can still keep some of this reality, but when he does a, a quick swing, or he jumps up, rather than have the thing sort of go up over his head, it sort of goes out. Mm. And, it, it there. and so there's, a, we need a little bit of, uh, uh, as much as anything else, sort of kind of artistic animation that is not technically correct, right. but is is romantically correct. Okay. 
On the first film, the characters that we were animating, for the most part, were pretty broad. This film, for us, was a bigger challenge in terms of having a lot more dramatic acting coming from the characters, as opposed to just comedic acting or simply action. On top of trying to be very naturalistic and subtle with the performances, we have all the realism issues of cloth and weight and so forth to deal with. With the Kaminoans, they're tall and graceful, and it's tricky to do that and at the same time have a sense of weight and substance so that they don't just feel completely floaty. KOJ290. Still needs work on the rope. Yeah. Whoa! You know what? I would love to have those hands separated more. I love how you're pulling them together so we read it they're being lassoed. Yeah. But I'd love to get that other hand, just another half a hand or a hand width further away. So and, you get to read that. And yeah. I would, you know, you've got them kind of like this if you're a camera. Mm -hmm. I'd put it this other hand more like this. Because the thing is, you know, the thing we struggled with originally is that, you know, he's using the force to get his thing, and we've never seen a Jedi use two hands. And I, I just don't want it to look like he's doing this to get the thing. I want it. It's really clear that he's sticking his hand out to get the lightsaber, and this one's just kind of for balance. I don't know what it's, Jeez. you know. But if you put it like this, then it looks like he's. So just it's the same. Yeah, but, but uh, put your place hand in space, right. but just and then pull it out here. Yeah, pull it out I there. I want it like for the. And just drop the fingers a little bit. And then I want you to pose the hand. <laughs> like this. And then I want you to go like this. You know what I love is. Uh, this little micro acting moment that's happening right here with his face. He's, there, he's like looking, oh, eh, it's happening. Oh, that's no good. Oh. <laughs> and he looks and watches the saber go by. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. great. That's great. <laughs> the shroud of the dark side is falling. The gun is going to Nice. So it's all perfect up until the very end. OK. The last. 25 frames are okay. the goof ones. The goof ones? Yeah, go okay. back to frame, the last frame. Okay. That's the last frame. Yeah. Slightly too happy. Slightly too happy, okay. The smug. Okay. He was too sinister before. Oh, so we went from sinister to smug? Okay, well, we know how to uh, be Well, he's, he's, he needs to be worried. Okay. You need to get a, you know, concerned look. Okay. Yeah, you know, it doesn't look like we're getting a sheen off the horn. I you know, imagine that there's a light up on the ceiling somewhere, and I just wanted to kind of get something that looked like a specular highlight across some of that. And seeing as the you know the horn is not super shiny, it's right. uh, it would be a pretty broad highlight. Okay. And maybe just moving it around a little bit. And my question is, is there any way to use it Right. So maybe something like that. Although I think you might have to be around a little bit further. It's just I, w I want to get the highlight more in the, f the flat part and less out on the on the edge. There we go. All right, I'll only go back around just a little bit. All right. Well, that kind of reads as a specular highlight now. And it's kind of in the right place. Well, I think that looks good. Now this shot we've started to call the Widowmaker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can't wait to see. This one. This one. <laughs> Such an innocent looking I shot. I know, I know. Such I an innocent little thing. <laughs> the Clone War has yeah. begun. <laughs> Come on, guys. How hard is that? I don't know. The, the Clone War has begun. The, the, the director has approved it a couple of times. And then unapproved and it. And then unapproved it. <laughs> Acting is always Victory, the hardest part. you say, Master Obi-Wan, not victory. The shroud of the dark side has fallen. Begun this Clone War has. Oh, come on, guys! <laughs> Now, that's pathetic. Well, I know. I'm trying to push it as far into the pathetic as possible so yeah, that you can say. Yeah, but that's really pathetic. I mean, he's not okay. sad. He's 
Look how he's, sad he uh, is. He's yeah, I know. He's really sad. sad. He's, he's really like, sad. He's sad. <laughs> because I keep getting these notes saying, has to be a little sadder. Has to be a little sadder. Well, so I said, sorry, go sad. sad. All right, sad, really make... sad is not the right, right word. So I got the right reaction. Um, Good. Sad is not the right word. Um, Look how sad. Yeah, poor little, little face, Yoda. Little poor little Yoda. <laughs> No, uh, it needs to be. Just, you know, we've done it before. A dry year in the We've house. done it before. It's it's. Uh, it's he's ref he's reflective. He's right. concerned. Right. He's um, upset. Okay. He's not angry. Right. You're it's just he's. It's like mm, you know, it's got to be uh, the inevitability of it. Right. When is this guy's walking too slow? Yeah, it kind of looks like he's he's on something, and he can't quite remember what part of the city he's in. This damn city looks all alike to me. <laughs> I know I live here somewhere. Yeah, these guys look all right. This guy. It's the same walk. Well, you should sort of make it twice as fast for him. Yeah. But apart from that, it looks great. Okay. This looks good. It is moving around here. That looks great. Is Kevin Martell there? I am. All right. <laughs> George, you've met Kevin before, I think, but he's the one who's working on the Widowmaker shot. The Widowmaker. Uh huh. <laughs> so you got him brought in. Uh huh. <laughs> uh. See? See? We wanted just to share the love with Kevin here. <laughs> so, Kevin, front and center, please. All right. This is called performance. <laughs> All right, so this is where Kevin has brought us. Victory, the shroud of the dark side, has fallen. Begun. This clone war has. Uh -huh. I just wonder about his ears. Okay. How much they fall? How yeah. much they droop at the end? Uh huh. I would. This clone war has. I would uh, maybe let him stay up a little bit more. Keep them up. Yeah. It's a little. It's a little too. A little too hangdogish. Okay. This clone war has. Yeah, I think, yeah. No, I think yeah. it'll work. Okay. Great. Already? That's a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It's, it's, hitting over the well, it's not getting a performance out of a regular actor. It's just, it takes a lot longer to get right, there. A couple more takes. That's why they'll say digital actors are going to take over. I don't <laughs> think so. Well, somehow, when they talk about digital actors, they don't realize that you exist. Right, he's digital, but I'm not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that Christopher really can fight, can he? Yeah. Looks great. My God. Unbelievable. Okay. Great. Look at that. It's Christopher Lee. All right. Five weeks and counting. We're doing really, really well. We only have 24 shots left to hand over to the animator, yeah. which is excellent. And we have only 12 match moves we're waiting on. So we're in really good place. We only need 16 finals a week, and we made 45 this week. Yeah. So we're doing really well. I hope everybody saw the letter that Frank Oz sent myself and all of you this week. He certainly was moved by what we did, and I'm very appreciative that he took the time to write the letter, and I, w I wanted to make sure that you saw it. So I want to share that with you because it's the group effort of everybody here and, and all the great T's and compositors who made him look as great as he does. So I see that as a triumph on our behalf. So hopefully the fans will like him as much as Frank and George do. So hats off to you guys. Well, a hug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks great. Well, his, his hands are animated, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. Hands. But on this one, his head is real. Yeah. But well, that's it looks the only part of him that we're actually yeah. obtaining. Well, but it looks great. That's yeah, amazing. I think that's fairly convincing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Looks great. Yeah, much better. Costume looks great. Creature looks great. Yep. Yeah. Looks great. I'm gonna make a whole movie in here. <laughs> Beautiful. Yep. This stuff looks good. 
but it looks good to me. It looked good to me before. Okay. Okay, that's it for the HD. There we go. That's it? Yep. Is that everything? Yeah. Hey, well. Thank you, guys. Do you want to do another one? <laughs> hey, Rob. You know, well, that, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic job. I mean, there's no yeah. getting around it. The theatrical cinema, as we know it, is storytelling. And uh, so the technology is used to tell a story, and that's the whole point. It's really the filmmaker and how well they're able to tell the story that counts in the end. The digital characters are what I need really to tell the Star Wars films, so I could have a story that was more like the one that I could think of in my head. The animators that work on the film are part actors. And it's the director's job to say, that's a good little bit, this is not a good little bit. Tone it down, beef it up, faster, more intense. It's all acting. <laughs>